Okay, so we're going to be talking about dungeon cards. So these are a deck of 52 cards that help you to create random dungeons either while you play or before your session. So uh, if you're doing it before the session, probably 10-15 minutes and you'll have yourself a dungeon. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Initially, you just take out the objective cards, of which there are three, and the stairway cards, of which there are four in the standard deck. And uh, you just put those aside. So the um, primary, secondary, and tertiary objectives, uh, you will decide for yourself what these will be for your game. Um, in this example, I'm just going to use the primary objective. And then these are the four different stairwell cards. So then the rest of the deck, you just shuffle those up. So there'll be 45 cards here now. Uh, you shuffle those up and then deal out 15 or more cards. The more cards you deal out, the larger your dungeon will be. But as a standard small dungeon for a single session, 15 cards is what you want to be using. From those 15, you then deal out the first five. And uh, you can shuffle it first if you want, but you deal out the first five. And then there's two ways to do this. Either randomly select one card and replace it with the primary objective card. Or you can uh, select from the cards that you have which one uh, you feel is an appropriate uh, um, primary objective. Place that down and uh, replace it with the primary objective card. And then either way, shuffle those five cards and then you must place them at the bottom of the deck. So they must go on the bottom of the deck uh, because you want the primary objective to be as late as possible. Now, if you're using secondary and tertiary, you first put the tertiary, then put the secondary, and then finally the primary objective decks of five. That will be explained in the PDF. So then you grab a stairwell, you cut the deck, randomly cut the deck, place in the stairwell, and then take another stairwell and place it on top of the deck. So that's the very first card. You can discard the rest of the stairs then. So first card is a stairwell. And then moving on to the next one. So this here is a dead end. So what happens when you've got no doors, no secret doors, and no passage whatsoever? This is an inappropriate card. So thankfully we've got this first so I could demonstrate it to you. So you just place that at the bottom of the deck and continue on as normal. So the first card then out is a straight passage. Now this straight passage has plus one door. So not only does it have the normal um, direction out of the passage, but it also has a door in it. So this is what we call a branching card. And with any branching card, you then branch it into two separate decks. So dealing from the bottom of the deck, it must come from the bottom and not the top. You split it into two separate decks, one for each direction. So one is going down the passage and one is going through the door. So you just deal those out one at a time until there are no cards left. Um, and then you've got to select which direction you want to go. Um, so if you're playing the game, the characters obviously select which way they want to go. But if you're designing the dungeon, it doesn't really matter. So this is a straight passage and it also has plus one door. Now, because we already have a branch, we're not actually going to branch again. So you, the, the rule is basically you want to branch whenever there's no branches, then you branch. Whenever there are branches, you do not branch. So the next card out is a medium room. Now this has two doors. So normally if there were no other branches, you would create two, um, two branches out from this. But because we already have the one branch, that just stands as a termination card. And we then place the remainder of that branch at the bottom of the other one. So the characters would have gone up, found there was um, the medium room's a bit of a dead end, gone back and continued along the passageway. So this is a room with a plus one door. Now, normally you would terminate here, but because we've got um, cards left to go, um, the door will automatically go out. So it's um, just uh, continuing on as a passageway. So now this card is a huge room. So this one has three doors. So it is a, um, a one of the more advanced branching cards because it will split into three decks. So from here, we're going to then create three decks, one, two, and three, and we will be able to go diagonal if we want to. And again, dealing from the bottom, split the decks across, 
and then select which direction you want to go. So you, one of three directions here. So this one we're going to see. The first one here is a straight passage, um, which again you'd be able to branch out from, and this one be able to branch to because it's got two doors. But what we're going to do, I'm going to pretend that this is a dead end. So what you would do if it was dead end, the remaining cards from that branch would then need to be split amongst the other two branches. So you then just deal them one, two, and then from the bottom, um, and then place them at the bottom of the um, of the other. Um, branching decks and then again you just choose a direction and continue on in that direction so this one's a narrow corner and um, so it would either go diagonally or because or, yeah, there's cards on, on either side of it um, or you just continue straight um, and just create a meander in that section and here is a small room and that acts as a terminator so um, these cards here get placed at the bottom of the other branching deck that remains and then we continue on in that diagonal direction off the huge room and here's a straight passage and it's got no doors but it does have a secret door so now you see because this was placed next to a card that also has a secret door plus one on it that means that a secret door exists there and um, the characters can actually pass between the two um, areas um, with the straight passage being the entrance and the narrow corner being the exit. So now we continue on, it's a narrow passage and a straight passage and a primary objective. So now the primary objective, once you get the primary objective card, you then grab the card that was selected in the beginning and place that down and you can, whatever you've decided in your game is the primary objective that happens there. And now that is normally a termination card, but because we have cards remaining in the deck, um, it then automatically creates one exit, um, and then you continue on. So here we have the spiral staircase. Um, so the spiral staircase allows you to go down, the characters go down to the next level. Um, and because we've got more cards, you can also continue on off that as well. So here we've got another dead end. Now, dead end, no doors, no secret doors. So um, it's inappropriate for here. So we place the dead end again at the bottom of the remaining cards of the deck and continue dealing out. So here's a narrow passage and sorry, a narrow corner and a, then a narrow passage and finally the dead end card. So that's the pretty basic instructions of how it all works. Now there's a near infinite number of variations in this and what I tend to do is you can also uh, use some markers to mark out where the doors are um, that have been created and also have a slightly separate market for the secret doors as well. And if you want, have a piece of paper and write down or draw out the map and there you go. It's very simple, easy and quick. Dungeon Card comes as a 15 page PDF, two pages of instructions and rules as we've outlined in the video, and then 13 pages of cards. So the cards basically you can print out and I used in here, I just used the little um, card protector decks. Um, I fold the cards over so one side is the card, the other side is the back and place those into the protection deck. Dungeon Cards is available from the website, the dmg.info forward slash store and it is $1.99 US.